Hello. It's mid-July and today I'm out in the garden and I'm saving seeds. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. Propagating your own plants is one of the most satisfying things you can do as a gardener. Creating new plants from the stock that you have in your garden has some real advantages. Firstly, you're going to save money because if you're getting your plants from your garden, they're now free and you get the satisfaction of knowing that you're creating your own plants. But not only that, when you propagate from your garden, so whether you're taking cuttings or with runners or layering or saving your own seeds, those plants would have started to acclimatise to your microclimate and therefore should be stronger, healthier, more robust plants. And to save your own seeds, you don't need many tools. You need a pencil or pen and uh, some paper envelopes or paper bags and that's it and the only other thing you need is a little bit of patience. I'm back in my favourite hidden spot in the garden. I wanted to talk today a little bit about remembering to save seeds not just at the end of the year but right through the year and in this video Hugh Richards author of Veg in One Bed and Grow Food for Free will talk a little bit about his seed saving but I just want to show you or to remind you that you can save seeds uh, all year round. So I'm going to get my gloves on and we can have a little look at some of the seeds that I've been saving. It's quite windy in here today and the, uh, the covering of the polytunnel is making quite a lot of noise so I hope you can hear me. This is uh, mustard ruby streaks, it's one of my favourite salad leaves. I forgot to water it enough uh, here in the polytunnel it started going to seed so rather than uh, waste the plant I thought uh, I would let it flower uh, and collect some of the seeds uh, to be able to sow another time. So I've kind of just tied them up to get them out of the way um, but they had these lovely uh, mustard yellow <laughs> flowers uh, as you would expect with a mustard um, and uh, they produce these little uh, seed pods so there's lots of seed pods uh, coming off the stem I can see the little seeds in them and now I need to leave these to dry out uh, completely before the seeds come out of them but what I'm going to do is uh, cut the plants and put all of this into a large paper sack and hang it uh, upside down so as the pods dry out uh, and the seeds pop out of them they'll pop out into a, a large paper sack uh, and I can collect them all uh, at a later moment. So uh, next step is to get the sack on to the plant um, and then I can tie that and take it away. So I've used some baling twine uh, just to gather the top uh, but it's still quite loose and uh, another piece to tie that up. I've left uh, a long piece on it so I can hang it. And for now, uh, I will hang it here uh, in the polytunnel, um, but later on I will take it uh, through to the cool shed and uh, let it hang uh, in the dark in the shed. And so mid-July, let's have a look and see what that bag uh, of oriental ruby streak seeds looks like. I didn't check before I started filming so you are seeing it at the same time as I am. So what I have in here now is masses uh, of dried seed pods with tiny seeds in them. I had hoped that these pods would open um, and empty themselves into the bag which they haven't done. So uh, what I'm going to have to do is uh, split, split them and I'm, I am actually going to do this in the, in the bag. I will uh, scrunch them and shake them into the bag uh, to get those tiny little seeds out. But they're dry and they're ready to store. So I'll do lots of scrunching uh, and breaking up those uh, seed pods and just a few minutes of doing that is going to give me masses of seeds. I can then either store them in small airtight containers or in paper envelopes ready for use next year. 
Hi Liz, thank you very much for having me on. I'm gonna start with the worst example to begin with, just to get it out of the way. And this is Swiss chard. I grew bright lights here last year. So this is the second year. And all of them were actually looking pretty healthy, like these two. And then we got that frost earlier on in May. And you can see the rest of these. For example, uh, this one here has been hit really hard by frost and they're looking a little sad. So I'm hoping that they will pull through and I'm letting these bolt. Now the thing that I love about Swiss chard, just a little note, is even if it bolts, these are still perfectly edible. Unlike when lettuce bolts, it turns bitter, it doesn't happen with Swiss chard. So I'm letting these grow. They'll grow into really tall flying stems, uh, perhaps around I don't know, six foot tall. You'll see some footage of a tour that I did last year at the moment where you can see an example. Let them dry and then I'm going to save them. So just make sure if you are trying to save seed that you have at least four, six, preferably more plants that are all going to seed because this means they can cross pollinate with each other and it's really important to have that cross pollination rather than saving seed just from one. Now I'm going to show you another example which is Swede. I've only got four Swede plants and that's mainly because I got a bit hungry over winter but these are now running to seed so we planted these or sown them around May last year, May 2019. It's now May 2020, you can see what stage they're at. The thing about Swede is that you have these flower tops which are edible and uh, really delicious. And then you let them flower. The pollinators absolutely love it. Now, Swede is a brassica. And the thing about brassicas when it comes to seed saving is that it's very difficult because they very easily cross pollinate with other brassicas. For example, Swede can cross pollinate with kale, etc. But because I have no other brassicas pollinating at the moment, I'm letting these and these are going to pod up and I'm going to kind of just let them again dry on the plant take them off and stick them in a bag and I'm just really excited to see how this goes and I've never saved Swede seeds before bit of a tongue twister there and yeah it'll be cool to see what happens. This very beautiful uh, little white flower is nine star broccoli that's a perennial broccoli and I've let it flower and go to seed so I can collect the seeds uh, and it was only after <laughs> it had started going to seed I remembered that a uh, little way over there, uh, there is some Asturian tree cabbage that's also gone to seed. So there's a very real chance that they've cross-pollinated. I'm still going to save the seeds. I'm going to give it a go. So I've got an envelope. Uh, I'm going to just write on it before I put the uh, seeds in there. Nine star broccoli. And today I'm only going to collect the seeds from the very driest of the pods. You can either uh, save the pods uh, and then when you get inside <laughs> empty them all out or you can empty them as you go. And so I've just opened the pod and I'm just taking out the seeds and collecting them in the envelope. I don't really want to store uh, a lot of the pod in there because there is the potential for it not to be 100% bone dry uh, and therefore go mouldy. So if I can, I just want to save the seeds. It's really tempting to save the seeds, uh, all of the seeds, but actually I don't really need that many plants of Nine Star Broccoli. So I'm gonna save maybe 20 seeds at the most and then we can see over the next 18 months uh, whether this had cross-pollinated or not. And then I'm just going to seal the envelope so they don't get mixed up with others. The seal hasn't worked terribly well, so I'm going to fold it over, knock all the seeds down into one end and fold it in half. And there, in my very scribbly writing, I now know what that is and I can store these away. I'm standing in uh, what's up to now we've called the Chicken Palace and when we first moved here this was a very big log store and uh, during the first year uh, I put some pallets along the front and chicken wire uh, and created a space uh, for the chickens and turkeys 
so they could be inside and undercover. Uh, we also had their house in here. Well, we've taken all of that down and uh, we've mucked out um, as much as we can over the last few weeks uh, on the floor and we've leveled it off as best we can and I've now put down this slightly noisy uh, plastic sheeting uh, it's actually a damp uh, damp proof course membrane that gives me a kind of cleaner space to be in I've brought in this table and another table there and we've put those small shelves up on the wall and the idea is that this will be my new potting room. On these small shelves, uh, I'm going to store seeds that I've collected. So I've got uh, loads of little pots. Uh, these are uh, pill pots, that little pill bottles uh, that are saved for me by my neighbour. And uh, I've put a label uh, over the uh, their prescription label so that I'll be able to write on it uh, what seeds uh, are in each uh, bottle and I'll also be able to put envelopes of seeds on here. I feel so lucky uh, to have this dedicated space uh, for potting, uh, for planting up seeds uh, and for storing my seeds. Now, this is a huge space, but you could replicate something like this uh, in a shed and just give yourself uh, some really nice storage space. So this is a different example of seed saving where I haven't actually stored the seeds in envelopes indoors. The seeds have been storing in the ground over winter. This time last year, I was growing lettuce. I then let it seed in summer. I did collect some of the seeds, but I let the rest of them fall on the ground. And then in March, I started to see little lettuce uh, begin to appear and we've already taken quite a nice harvest today and uh, yeah it's just a, a prime example of sometimes just letting things go to seed and not doing anything just sitting back and seeing what happens you can get some amazing results. This wild garlic uh, is going to seed and what I'm doing uh, is I'm bending the stems over and just encouraging them to uh, drop the seeds uh, onto the soil here and then um, like these ones uh, over here and then I'll plant these modules out uh, under the trees a bit later in the year. Sweet Sicily seeds are quite large uh, so they're fairly easy to handle And although I'm tempted to uh, keep masses of them, uh, I'm also going to scatter some of them uh, on the ground around the plant. I'll know that's what they are uh, because they're <laughs> right next to the plant and they will have that telltale paleness on their young leaves. I still consider myself to be quite new to seed saving and I started with the basics and that was with legumes. For example, these runner beans, I've got scarlet runner beans here, and also with peas. In fact, peas are the easiest. You just save them uh, after they've dried at the end of the year and grow them the following year. The same is with runner beans. I'm gonna let these grow and I'm trying to grow extra runner beans this year just so I can save a lot more seeds and also use those in seed swaps as well to perhaps swap with seed varieties that I can't quite save seed from. And the plan is I'm keeping these runner beans away from the other climbing beans and runner beans because even though they're very unlikely uh, to cross pollinate because they're self pollinating, this is the same with peas, just to reduce any likelihoods of adventurous bees going between the flowers, I'm just keeping them around 10 meters away from the rest. Here are my runner beans. Uh, it's a variety called White Lady and I'll leave information about all the plants I've talked about today uh, in the video description. Some of these beans, uh, like this one, are grown from seed. Others, uh, like this one, uh, I grow as perennial beans. And if you haven't seen those videos yet, I'll also leave a link for those. This lovely old variety of runner bean uh, will cross-pollinate with other runners. And behind me, uh, just over here, I have the Greek Gigantes beans and they are also uh, white flowered with a white bean and there's a very real chance that over the last uh, four years they have cross pollinated and that I'm now growing uh, a cross between those two. It's a gamble I've chosen to take um, and I have found that uh, the 
beans inside uh, the pods of these runner beans are getting bigger which would imply uh, to me that they are cross-pollinating so I may end up with two rows of of mixed <laughs> beans I'm okay with that if it gets to the point where the Greek gigantes beans are getting uh, too small inside their pods I'll buy some fresh seeds from a seed seller I collect seeds from nasturtiums uh, from the moment they start producing them. You can collect them uh, when they first appear in the green like this um, and dry them out uh, or you can wait until a bit later in the year uh, and they will start to go much darker and brown and collect them then. The other thing you can do uh, is if you collect them when they're green is that you can pickle them uh, and use them as an alternative uh, to capers. And calendula seeds are also easy to collect. Now I would prefer to wait until uh, they are um, browner, so they've already started drying. You can uh, collect the seed heads when they first start forming, but uh, it is better to wait until uh, the seeds are more developed and then just uh, remove any green parts or orange parts of the flower uh, and just save the seeds. Our first flush uh, of chai flowers are now uh, well and truly gone to seed and all I do is pick up one seed head it makes it very easy to collect. When it comes to seed saving something that you've got to do is you want to pick seeds or you want to save seeds from the plants that show the most vigor and the most health because if you choose the best examples chances are the seeds are going to perform the best if you save seeds from just weak plants or plants that have bolted prematurely like lettuce chances are they're not going to perform as well as you'd expect when it comes to sowing those seeds the following years thanks Hugh Last thing for me to do uh, is to put away my pencil, store away some Cosmos uh, and the Nine Star broccoli seeds. Sweet Sicily I'm taking indoors, so I'm going to uh, pop it in a pot. I will make sure I've labelled the pot and put the date on it. There we go, 13th of July 2020. I'll get these into there and get them in the fridge and so. Wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again next time.